second notion of convergence that we will talk about is convergence in distribution. Uh, let's again take a sequence of random variables x1, x2, and so on from the same uh, probability space. Um, we say that the sequence xn converges in distribution to a random variable x if uh, the cumulative distributions functions of the random variables xn all converge uh, as n increases, uh, that is, uh, the uh, cumulative distribution function fxn converges the, to this function uh, fx of x, which is the cumulative distribution function of the random variable x. So uh, these functions, basically, if these cumulative distribution functions converge to this function uh, fx, then we say uh, the random variables converge in distribution to the random variable x. A classic example of this is the central limit theorem, which is very, very commonly uh, used in uh, engineering and other fields where probability ap is applied. Um, so uh, the simplest version, there are many versions of the central limit theorem, but let's take the simplest version, version where um, we take uh, a sequence of IID random variables um, with a finite expectation uh, and finite variance. And let's form, let's form uh, Zn, I'm sorry, Xn, let's form Xn as a normalized uh, sample um, sum such that we form Xn by taking the first n of the Zi's adding them um, and normalizing the sum by the square root of n. Okay, so what we have produced by doing this is a random variable whose mean increases uh, like square root of n times uh, mu. Okay, so its mean keeps shifting uh, from mu up to infinity as we uh, as we increase n, okay, and whose variance, though, that's the key here, uh, it variance stays constant, okay, because the variance of one over n square root of n, well, square root of n gets squared. It's one over n times n times sigma squared, which is sigma squared. Okay, so this in the, under this particular scaling, uh, the new random variable we produced uh, ha converges in distribution to a Gaussian. What does that mean? The probability that xn minus n times mu uh, is uh, the probability that this thing is less than or equal to uh, I'm sorry, square root of n times mu, uh, the probability that this thing is less than or equal to x converges as a sequence to phi of x, where phi of x is the CDF of a standard Gaussian. Um, we could uh, provide a brief proof of this. Uh, but the particular proof I will attempt to do assumes uh, that uh, the um, uh, random variable zi have well-defined moment generating functions. So let's do that. Let's just say proof. <coughs> uh, first of all, notice that uh, the moment generating function of xn 
can be obtained from the moment generating functions of the zi uh, very easily because um, when we add independent uh, random variables, the moment generating functions are multiplied. When we add iid uh, random variables, this means that we are simply taking the moment generating function to the nth power. Here, there's an additional scaling here which we need to take care of. Uh, essentially, then you can show that the moment generating function of uh, <coughs> xn is simply the moment generating function of uh, the zi's, which we will call mz. Um, uh, so let, let, let the moment generating function of zi be, so um, m define mz of t as the expectation of e to the s t, okay, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, the expectation of e to the z t, where t is an arbitrary uh, real number, okay, so this is the, this is the moment generating function, okay. Uh, it, it's easy to show using the properties of moment generating functions that you learned in undergraduate probability that this is uh, mz of t over uh, sigma <coughs> square root of n, okay, uh, raised to the power n. But here I did something in addition. Uh, in addition, I assumed. Uh, that the mean is zero for now. <coughs> uh, we can always uh, put the mean back in. Um, it is. It would be too cumbersome to carry the mean around in this argument. Okay. For now, let's uh, assume that mu is zero. Uh, okay. So we're adding these zero mean random variables and normalizing by square root of n. Uh, so um, now, what do we do about this? First of all, well, I want to expand m z. Um, uh, around zero using a Taylor series expansion. Okay, um, z of s can always be uh, expanded as m z of zero plus s times uh, m z, uh, the der first derivative at zero, uh, plus one half s squared um, z second derivative at zero plus higher order terms uh, epsilon s, where um, epsilon s uh, over s squared goes to zero as s goes to zero. Right. So then, uh, so then, um, uh, now mz of zero is by definition one. Um, 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 m0 is of 0 is always 1 by definition of a moment generating function. And um, as the expectation, since the expectation of z is 0 and the variance of uh, z is sigma squared, we know that the first derivative at 0, which is the expectation, is 0. So this goes away. And the second derivative, uh, because the expectation is zero, second derivative is equal to the variance. Normally, it is the uh, second moment. So this is sigma squared. All right. So then, um, let letting uh, s to be t over um, square root of n sigma, uh, we have that um, uh, as s goes to zero and n goes to infinity, we have m z n of t, uh, which is 1 plus sigma squared over 2 times t over sigma squared of n um, squared uh, plus epsilon n to the n. Uh, this 
is 1 plus t squared over 2n uh, plus epsilon n to the nth power. Okay. However, um, note that uh, if a sequence converges to a, ra uh, to a real number a, okay, uh, it can be shown that the limit as uh, n goes to infinity, 1 plus a n over n to the n uh, converges to e to the a. So we'll apply that here, and it follows that m, uh, well, um, this is not m z n, this is m x n, m x n of t as n goes to infinity is equal to um, e to the t squared over 2. But this is nothing but the moment generating function of a standard Gaussian. Um, so uh, similarly, uh, you could show for the non-zero mean case uh, that under this scaling, the moment generating function converges to the moment generating function of a Gaussian. Um, and there is a theorem that we didn't prove, but you could also always look it up um, in a textbook, uh, that uh, the moment generating function uh, converging uh, to a, the moment generating function of a distribution uh, fx implies that the corresponding uh, distribution uh, also converges to the uh, distribution x. So uh, that essentially is a sketch of the proof of a simple case of the central limit theorem. There are many other versions of the central limit theorem and this is essentially uh, the most useful example of convergence in distribution.